with Streamlabs desktop. Again, you can download it from this kind of page inside of Twitch. You can go to their website, click the download button. Uh, it's very streamlined. As soon as you click download, they'll be like, hey, make an account with us, blah, blah, blah. And then you'll have like a dashboard. So on your dashboard on Streamlabs OBS, there's a couple things. So this screen that you're looking at right now is my Streamlabs dashboard. And what that means is I've made an account with them. And now that I've logged in, I can check out all of the things that are tools that I can use. And so we're going to come back to this, but this is kind of like a, uh, a, a resource for widgets, such as your alert box, your event list. Uh, you can even have things like a donation goal. Let's say you had like a follower goal or, and there's so many cool things that you can add to your stream that these are like extra kind of like icing on the cake in a way. And so we're going to come back to this, but first we're going to look at the software itself. And so I'm going to delete all these and we're going to start from scratch. Cause I was just poking around the software as a good idea is to kind of like introduce you to. So the first time you open it up, this is kind of what your screen will look like. Uh, if you were to click around, there's this little arrow here that you can open up your stream chat. And this is pre-built in, like this is ready to go. Uh, the only things that you do have to add are through the settings. So when you're in the settings, we're going to go ahead and talk about this because this is, uh, it, it's a little bit more advanced because you're not using Twitch's built-in software. Instead, you have to kind of like plug it in as you go. So let's say I wanted to start streaming on Twitch. If I want to start streaming, I need a stream key. And so to get your stream key, you have to go to your Twitch. And so let's open up Twitch. I can't really show you on screen because then you guys can hack my Twitch. Yeah, I was definitely going to mention, <laughs> fair warning, don't share your stream key with anybody. It's the same yeah. thing like sharing your MetaMask secret phrase, you know. If they get a hold of your stream key, then anybody could take your stream and broadcast. Yep. And that is definitely a security risk. Uh, luckily, they won't have access to like your funds or anything such as that. But if someone's streaming from your account, uh, you know, it's like someone stole your identity in a way. So it's blurred out. But if you wanted to find your stream key, you would go to your settings. And then in the stream section, it's at the very top. So I can copy it here and I'll click this copy button. Now that I have it, I can paste it here. And now that's pretty much ready to go. All I had to do was select Twitch as my service. The server will automatically pick from wherever is located closest to you. And then that's pretty much done. I can uh, click through other settings. I'll go ahead and click done just so it's saved. And now if I were to click back in there, stream key is already put in. Perfect. So more settings. Again, this is kind of like the next step in your Twitch streaming journey is learning what each of these do when you're streaming, it's putting everything from this particular track out onto your stream. So if your microphone is coming to one and two, you're, it's still going to one. And your gameplay, maybe it's only on audio track one, not on audio track two. But just to kind of like hammer that point home, if you're recording, you can have more than one audio track recording. And so let's just say I had the gameplay and the microphone recording to one, but microphone was the only thing on audio track two. If I were to go into this recording later on, there would be two different files for my audio. One, track number one, would have the microphone and the gameplay already mixed. Like the audio track two would only have the microphone. And so that is kind of something that you can use specific with OBS and Streamlabs OPS that can be very essential for post-production. And so that would be like video editing. So back to the streaming settings though. Now that you understand how like recording works in a, in a way, very generally, we're gonna look more at like the output mode. And so there's a simple output mode that you can use just to get started. And this is probably where I would suggest you start as a, a new streamer. And then we'll look more into the advanced. But uh, each of these settings, we'll just talk over briefly. And then if you have questions, would love to kind of answer them as they come up. So video bitrate, as we saw, was like how many bits are being shared through your upload speed. So 3000 is a great starting point. And it's something I use 
uh, specific to like sandbox because it's not like Fortnite, for example, where you're like spinning the camera around and you don't need to be sharing all of this information, which that's all it is, is these bits is like how much information is happening at one point. So with sandbox, like 4,000 is probably enough to have like a crisp, clear gameplay experience. Uh, I wouldn't go lower than 1,000 if even if your internet uh, is like very bad. If it's that bad, 1,000 is like the minimum. Uh, 2,500 is a great place to start, uh, but shoot for like 2,500, 3,500 for like a good uh, average gameplay. Uh, if your internet's great, 6,000 is where you should be looking at. Like if your internet can manage it, start with 6,000. So now that we're done with that, uh, you can see there's an encoding section. So if you have a great processor, you'll want to use the software. But if you have a great graphics card, uh, this is arguably the better solution. So let's say you have like a 1080p, uh, you know, Titan graphics card, whatever the kids are using these days, you would use the NVEC encoder. And so that puts all of the streaming kind of like processing power on your graphics card. So the graphics card is doing all the work. Audio bitrate, I wouldn't worry too much about unless you're like an audiophile. 128 is the kind of default, the starting package. And it's kind of like the standard, especially with um, streaming, broadcasting, as well as video content in general. Uh, when you go into these higher settings, it's, it's more so for like certain auditorial experiences like ASMR, like maybe somebody would want like higher bitrate for that. Uh, so recording path, you can set all of these things up in advance. You can browse to a, a folder that you want specifically on your computer. You can record in whatever quality you would prefer. Maybe your computer can't handle uh, like a high quality. You can instead use like same as stream and maybe your stream's only doing 2000 bit, bit rate per second. You can change your audio recording format. And so MP4 is the standard when it comes to like video files and most video editors will be able to edit these. Uh, however, like FLV is the smallest file size out of these listed, but it's also harder to uh, put into some of the freer alternatives for video editing. So I recommend MP4. Uh, the encoder is, is definitely uh, dependent on whatever hardware you have in your computer. So if you have a great graphics card, use NVEC. If you don't, and perhaps your CPU is like the best part of your machine, you'll want to use one of the softwares here. And so that was the simple, let's just take a peek at the advanced settings. We won't go into too much detail, but uh, you can customize a lot of the settings that we were just kind of like poking through and simple. So for example, the constant bit rate, that's CBR or variable bit rate. And uh, several of these settings you don't necessarily need to use, but if you really wanted to kind of like find that sweet spot for your computer, you could customize these numbers. Uh, CPU speed, so you know, what order the processor would be on your computer in terms of like, let's say you never want your stream to kind of lag for a viewer, but the gameplay, it's okay if that lags. You can change it to be uh, ultra fast, for example. And that, that means like your, your stream will never be the problem. Instead, it, it is the problem. <laughs> but uh, yeah, just poke through these if you're curious, and I'd be happy to go into detail with these questions. Uh, but again, all you needed was your stream key. Now you have that, you'll check out, we'll start with simple output mode. Let's do, 3000 bit rate and audio you'll want to look into these settings make sure you have your desktop audio device as your default because that's where all your kind of alerts will come through is your de default desktop audio device but then also make sure you have a microphone set up so you can see i actually have uh set this this was disabled at first so you as a content creator will need to go in here and set your microphone. So you'll need to pick from whatever microphones you have available. I have a couple of extra things. I can answer questions about these, but they're digital audios. And so let's say I wanted to use my RTX voice microphone. So this is actually another <laughs> extra thing that I'll, I'll show you in the last part of this tutorial. But I picked my microphone out. 
And now that it's it's there, it's selected, you can see a audio representation of my voice. And so what's nice is I've already kind of adjusted it in the Windows settings to where it's not peaking. So when I get too close to the microphone, it might turn red, for example. And so red is when it's starting to get into that danger spot. <laughs> so uh, Chelios, you had asked about switching the resolution and so was that with Twitch Studio specifically? Or we can go into Streamlabs here. And so if you wanted to switch your output and uh, let's say your video resolution. If you were to click inside these settings here, inside the video resolution, 1920 by 1080p is the industry standard. That is your HD screens. But let's say your computer isn't able to manage that. Uh, you could take it down a notch. And so using that same ratio, which is 16 by 9, uh, so it's like, think of it in terms of inches. So that's like 16 inches by 9 inches. So that's like the, the rectangle you're looking at. So this is that same ratio, but uh, a little bit smaller. And so that also impacts how many bits are being displayed on your screen. So that goes back to the kilobits per second. So if you're doing 6,000 as your bit rate, and you're using less kind of like screen space, it's going to improve the overall quality, but at the same time, making it fractionally smaller. If you were in Streamlabs OBS, which we have open right now, we can customize our resolution. So again, that's the, uh, the frame size. And so if it's the same ratio, 16 by nine, it's the same frame, but just bigger. So it's the same kind of ratio, but larger. So just to kind of summarize what that in, it means is <laughs> it's sending those bits, more bits, because it's bigger. Uh, so we have all of these set up. We want to change the bit rate. That would be in our output settings and here in the streaming. So we're going to do 3K. I think 3K is a great place to start. And then you can kind of record and stream and look back on your progress and see, oh, maybe that wasn't, you know, good for my computer. But everything there is set up. While we were talking, I kind of set up a couple things. So now that we're in Streamlabs OBS, we have our scenes. So on the left side will be all of our scenes. So let's say we'll, we'll make two more. We'll do uh, just chatting. And then we'll also make a, a third scene or be right back. So in the Be Right Back scene, let's add like a cool picture. So you could click inside the next panel. It's called our sources. So inside the sources, you could click the plus. And then I want a cool picture. So we'll do a media source. Add source. Cool pick, bro. And then we'll browse and find in my wallpapers here. Oh, I apologize. This is uh, media sources for videos. <laughs> so we'll rename this the cool vid, bro. We wanted an image source, which is down here in the general. And so let's add a new source. It's a small tab here at the bottom. And so I found this cool wallpaper here. And so this is my be right back screen. So let's add uh, a text and we can say be right back on it. And so this text here is super small because we haven't typed anything yet. Maybe I have a particular font I like. Let's do Montserrat. And then we can adjust the font size. So I want this to take up a large percentage of the stream. So we'll do the maximum 288 here. And then we can also color it. We can make it red. And just by grabbing it, you can see it has this bounding box. So I can place it right in the center of the screen. And boom, that's a great example of a be right back screen. Because you probably wouldn't want your camera on it if you're stepping away for a time. But in, in the scene, let me walk through introducing your camera to a scene. So you would click the plus. And then you would do video capture device. So by clicking that, you add the source. 
And then my particular video, <laughs> it's hanging upside down. So in order to fix that, I have to right click, transform, and then flip vertically. So that's my camera. And my camera is recording in 1920 by 1080p. And so now I can change the size of it just by clicking the top left or top right or bottom left or bottom right. And it's going to scale it proportionally. You can also crop it. So if you hold down Alt on your keyboard, you can remove however much of the camera itself that you don't want. So let's say I just wanted this small square. And uh, Chelios is asking about the difference between scene and profile. Yes. So let's uh, talk about that. The profile is going to be kind of like your collection of scenes. So I have a couple here. Let's um, go into one of my dork scenes. Or profiles, I'm sorry. A dork profile. This is what I was streaming from when I first started. And then I moved into OBS. Studios. And so this is a game I used to play uh, called Final Fantasy XI. And so I had a, um, a whole selection of kind of scenes that I could pick from. And so they all had like unique... Uh, transitions and stuff and i had like interesting overlays but all of these scenes are tied to the profile so the profile in terms of game maker is like the parent and so the scenes are each children of that parent that have children of their own so let's go back to our squiggly test yeah, this got me thinking, man. I mean, if you're even streaming a game, it could be the game maker, it could be another video game. Like during a loading screen, you can switch scenes so that all of the chat is visible. Um, just makes it a lot more interactive to think that you can now change up every loading screen to have different elements. That's really smart. I hadn't thought of that. For sure. And by having these profiles, you're able to customize for a game specifically. And yeah, like Ed was saying, like having the chat maybe on a certain part of the uh, the screen itself, or perhaps only in your Vox edit and not in Game Maker. So by using these profiles, you're able to customize that a lot more, and then saving it. So it's like you can have like a version one, for example, and you don't want to edit any more of version one. You want to make a new version, and you'll have that version one just as your backup. And so. By using profiles, you're able to customize and basically save settings as you make them. And so that being your parent, you can go into these scenes, which uh, each of your scenes is basically a good way to separate games. So let's say, for example, this initial scene, we can rename it by right clicking. This will be my game maker scene. I can also duplicate it and make Vox edit scene. So now that I have those, I can reorder them by dragging and dropping them. And let's go ahead and st start up both the game maker. It's probably going to lag me. <laughs> and we'll start up Vox edit. And while those are booting up, we can customize our just chatting scene. So let's add a different picture. So a picture, a wallpaper, any of those things you can find online, Google, Pinterest, etc. So you'll find it on your computer. We can name it whatever we like, but we'll add the source. You'll browse to it. And then you'll go through the same kind of sequence of adding your sources. Excuse me. You can also copy your sources. So right now I've selected my video capture device, Control C. And now I can paste it. Control V into the same scene. And you can reorder everything on your screen as you see fit. So with the just chatting scene, I'll probably make my camera a lot bigger. So we'll remove that crop. And we can go center frame maybe <laughs> for this particular scene. I'm going into the, the cave of darkness. And so maybe I'll want chat on the right side of my screen. So let's let's see how we can add chat. So again, you'll go to your sources plus and then down here at the bottom you'll see all of the widgets that streamlabs obs can help you set up so with streamlabs you've made an account you've connected your twitch account now you can go into these settings 
and click any of these widgets and add them as a source. So just by clicking yes, yes, add, add, we can now have this widget on screen and in our sources. They even give you a kind of like a sample of like how it operates. It's not going to show up here, but they do give you an idea for like when people are actually talking in your chat. And you can customize all the various properties. Maybe you wanted to change the font or the background. You wanted to, if you're familiar with HTML, you can even customize it here. So that's an example. We can also add an alert box. This is something that you'll want to add to your stream because it notifies you when someone follows. So just by clicking add, so plus, and then selecting alert box, I now have this on my screen. And I can test it by having uh, this mini feed here. Let's say you've, you had a couple follows in the last couple of days. You're able to click like the repeat, which is this here on the right side. And you can test it. Or you can also just test it from these settings by double clicking the source. And so let's say I wanted to test a follow. We can click this play button. And I can see it in the box displayed. And everything that you can edit is here on the screen for you. So let's say I wanted to uh, change the media. I, I customized a lot of these in the past. But yeah, we can use some of the stock files. So I want the dancing avocado. I select yes. Uh, I can change the media. Uh, that's just an example of one of the many widgets you can add to your stream. So chat box, like you can add a goal. Yeah, there's so many great options here. Widgets are a browser source. So it's essentially sending a request to the Streamlabs website. And the Streamlabs is then kind of displaying HTML or website kind of information through that link. And so that link is then kind of being uh, added to your stream. So a lot of that backend is not displayed in Streamlabs OBS because you don't need to touch it. It's all used and kind of edited through this type of interface, which is fantastic for new streamers such as yourselves. And so by clicking all of this and adjusting all of this, you know, they, they even give you a way to customize the code, <laughs> but it's hidden behind several like fold out buttons it's like are you sure you want to do this and so what it's doing is it's kind of helping you uh by being the middleman so you can also add a, a browser source and this is the same kind of idea but not as intuitive or user friendly so you'll add web-based content so it's all using the internet and that connection and displaying it on your screen uh for the most part that doesn't really take up any bandwidth. I, I don't think that'll be any hindrance on your machine at all. And so as long as you have an internet connection, that's all you really need. So browser sources. Add a browser source. So again, I, I hit the plus arrow and Streamlabs OBS is what we're looking at right now. And you can even, you can still see my microphones going right now. And uh, my camera's actually picking up audio too. This is my camera. So in the browser source, we'll double click it and you can see a URL here. So it's like, oh, a URL, where would I find that? So let's go now to the Streamlabs website. So on the Streamlabs website, let's add a donation goal. Sure, why not? And here is the browser source URL. So it's a widget. So widget, it's like the keyword for a lot of these things. So we'll copy it. Please don't share this. I guess I shouldn't <laughs> share it. Uh, and now that we have that copied, we can go back to our browser source. And so right now, I'll, I'll put this back on screen. I'm customizing the goal. So I put in the browser source. You noticed it kind of disappeared with that kind of default background. So let's say it's going to end at the end of the month. We'll do 03 30 2022. Start goal. So now that our goal is saved, Look, we have it here as a interactive widget that we can customize. We can shrink it so I can use these arrows and maybe put it like right under my camera here. And so let's say we're saving money for charity. 
you know, help those in Ukraine. And so by saving and sharing this kind of interactive goal, as soon as someone donates some money, it's going to update. And so just to demonstrate that, we can add to the goal again. And look, the green arrow went up. So that's that's one example of a browser source. If you were to look through all the other widgets that Streamlabs op offers, you'll be able to kind of get an idea of how customized you can make your stream. And I highly recommend those of you interested in streaming, start poking down <laughs> this road and just kind of like checking out all of the cool features that you can add to your stream. Because it, it, I found it very fun and I fell down that rabbit hole of just customizing my stream. This is the software that you'll want to look into if you want to use OBS Studio to stream. So it's called Restream. And so you're able to multi-stream by broadcasting your Twitch key or your stream key through this platform, Restream. So Restream, just to kind of like sum it up, uh, takes whatever keys from each website that you're streaming to. So let's say Twitch and YouTube for this example. You're sending both of these stream keys to Restream, and then Restream spits out this new code that you put into OBS. And with this new code, basically all of your content is streamed directly to Restream. So this uh, software right here, it's, it's not even a software, it's a website. So they're receiving your stream and then they're broadcasting it to Twitch and YouTube. So it's, this is the free solution but uh, you can only, using the free version, only stream to like two places. So like Twitch and YouTube. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that if you become a Twitch affiliate, it is against the terms of service to stream to multiple platforms. So that is why Sandbox and Panda Pops, the good morning, afternoon, evening show, that is why they are not affiliate status, is so... They aren't breaking any rules. They're essentially streaming uh, using a service like Restream. I believe they actually use this service and they're probably paying for the additional features so that they can broadcast it across the internet and not just on Twitch. But Bobby, I don't know. Like, how would you think about this Twitch affiliate and Restream thing given this information? And what would be maybe your advice to, to a new streamer coming in because this seems like an important decision we have to make. Um, I don't see it as quite like as much of a problem. If you like Twitch, if you like the platform, um, you can continue to use it and and like focus on that platform. But if you want to uh, branch out, I mean, like I said, uh, you could use YouTube for for where your broadcasts go to retire. Uh, Twitch could be for the live broadcasts, and then YouTube could be your uh, your kind of plan B for whenever. You're done broadcasting. You've done a little bit of post-production. You've cleaned it up, and you've got somewhere to put it. Yeah, and just to piggyback off that, YouTube is essential for growth, but it doesn't need to be where your live streams are. So live streams can be like specific to Twitch and the fact that it's where someone can interact with you in real time. YouTube can be that portfolio. It can be a place where people find you and then can come and talk to you. So it's like you can use them synergized rather than only live stream. Using Twitch can be specific to live streaming. YouTube, as Bobby said, is fantastic for displaying your work as well as kind of promoting your Twitch stream. And so using those in tandem is part of the success formula to being a content creator. And uh, YouTube itself is what a lot of creators will say is how they started growing. So think of it in a way as like Twitch is how you're making the content. Like maybe you're making, you know, this gameplay and then you'll want to kind of like touch it up and put it into post-production in terms of like cutting it and, you know, putting a, a sensible story to your live stream. And then you're going to upload that to YouTube. And that's how people will find you because YouTube is much more uh, easier to find like an, a creator as well as absorb their content you know like if you find someone you're able to go through their uh entire collection their catalog and then it's like oh they they, they live stream and i can talk to them in person and thank them for you know whatever they did that's that's why youtube can be used for twitch growth 
And it's it's part of why a lot of uh, Twitch streamers are successful is because they have content across social media, not just on Twitch. Yeah, and that's an important so, point that I learned from, I guess, a YouTube video <laughs> of a streamer is he's like, don't count on your growth as a Twitch streamer coming from Twitch, meaning you got to put content on YouTube. You got to be on Twitter. If you're streaming the sandbox, you kind of know where everyone hangs out. It's like Twitter mainly um, and the sandbox discord, maybe a couple of other discords. But I think it's important to emphasize that if you just stream every single day without telling anybody, the organic growth that you're going to see is nothing like the organic growth you would get on TikTok. Uh, that you would get from following and engaging with creators on Twitter. So, so I don't know if Half Dark, you've seen this in your experience, but definitely I, I subscribe to that mindset that streaming alone is not going to grow your, your streamer base. Yeah, and Squigglyverse has such a, a great portfolio kind of kickstart program. And having that way of putting your content in an easily able to digest kind of fashion is important it's almost imperative as a content creator because live streams it's a, a a unique kind of interaction medium it's not something where people can like search you and then be like oh they made this this and this twitch streaming is more like you're joining them in a random point in time you know as they're doing something specific and so that's where portfolios come in play and i think Squigglyverse uh has this great kind of kickstarting program like you guys do wordpress you kind of introduce people to hosting your own things and so that's why i'm a, I'm a big fan 